Hi, I'm David Shukoff, Director of Education at Manhattan Theatre Club, and welcome to this week's segment of MTC Education's online family drama playwriting workshop series. Today's topic is tactics and stakes, not the meat, the other kind. Um, last week, we explored dramatic conflict how it results from one character with strong needs and desires encountering other characters with equally strong, equally powerful contrary needs. We explore that idea through the yes-no game in which one player using only the word yes trying to get the other player whose word was no to switch to a yes. As a refresher, you can take a look at last week's video or consult the PDFs attached to this week. I bet that the inventive yes players found themselves saying their word in any number of different ways, louder, or softer, repeated several times in a row, earnestly, cajolingly, and so on, all in an effort to accomplish their objective, to get their partner to switch. By doing so, the A player was employing tactics. The word tactics means the skill of employing all available means to accomplish an end. We usually use verbs, uh, technically infinitives, to describe tactics. Words like warn, or coax, or scold, or beg, and so on. They describe how, at a given moment, a character is going about realizing an objective or a desire. The objective is the what, the tactics are the how. Tactics is a key idea in theater. Let's see how it works. Here's the opening scene of MTC's 2011 production of David Lindsay Abair's Good People, directed by Daniel Sullivan. We actually looked at a snippet from this scene in an earlier, uh, in an earlier segment. The two characters, Margaret and her boss Stevie, are played by Frances McDormand and Patrick Carroll. As you watch, pay attention to what each of the characters wants, what they're trying to achieve, and in particular, take note of the tactics they use, especially Margaret. Take out a piece of paper and jot down the character's objectives and list the names of all the tactics that you can observe. So let's watch. Can we do this? Sure. You gotta make them give you a real office, Stevie. Because these alley conferences, there's no way to run a business. It smells back here. <laughs> you don't want to talk about why I brought you out No, here. I know. I was late again. I'm sorry. It's just the district manager comes in. I know. It was my choice to get it. You know, I can't leave her alone when she gets out of sauce. And I pay Dottie Dillis a little something to, look, to keep an eye on her, but Dottie is not the most reliable. Right. But the district manager comes out on me about it. I know. My guy's an ass, by my French. Maybe. But he's also my boss, and he looks over those punch cards. Okay. No! Not okay. You're late every day 20, 30 minutes. Yesterday it was almost an hour. It's not every day. Pretty much it is, and that reflects badly on me. <coughs> he wants to know why I can't keep my employees in line. You gotta explain about Joyce. She's in a program, thank God, but that is only so many hours a week. I, I explained it to her. Her. There's only so much I can do, Margaret. It is not only me, Stevie. Karen calls in sick every couple of days. Oh, yeah? I'm talking to Karen next. Well. While you got her out here, you should ask her why she's telling everybody you're gay. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> she says you're gay. <laughs> I am not gay. I know. So why did she say that? It's because you got a video. <laughs> <laughs> that makes me gay? I'm just telling you what she's saying to people. You go to bingo a lot. More than I do, more than Carrie does. I like bingo. Obviously. Plenty of men go to bingo. I wouldn't say plenty, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Freddie Gleason goes to bingo. Yeah. Frank Moore. Yeah, a few old timers. But yeah, that's what I've been telling her. Okay, it doesn't matter. Are you going to bring it up with her now? No, I'm going to say to her exactly what I'm saying to you. Well, she's a little lot more than I am. Okay. And she says she's gay. 
My friend. I know that's not gay, and I tell her that because you're dating. What's her name now? I don't know if that's supposed to be a secret or whatever, but everybody knows that. Not Karen, obviously, but everybody knows that. Can you listen to me, please? Okay. I understand. I was late again. I won't be anymore. You can tell him I got the warning. No, this isn't a warning. You've had warnings. I've given you seven in the last two months. You know I cannot leave Joyce alone. You know that. She's like a baby. And if Dottie doesn't show up when she's supposed to be. It's not like I have a choice in this. If I don't let you go, I get fired. Hey, now, what? What do you mean, let me go? I told you it could happen. <laughs> Every week the district manager comes in to look at the punch. No, I, I won't be late anymore. Tell him I promise. Tell him for you all the time. He won't have it anymore. I'm going to get somebody else to watch Joyce. Joyce is what you always say. This is about that Chinese girl, isn't it? No, and she's not Chinese. She might be a little fast on the register, but she makes more mistakes. First of all, she doesn't make mistakes, and secondly, she's And she lives two blocks away. It's easier for her to get here on time. Look, no, that guy comes in here, and he looks over your books, and he sees who's getting paid what per hour. Well, that's not what Because this I think in three years, I'll make a little more than the other girls, which costs the company a little more money. You're not reliable. You can't say that just because I'm late every once in a while. We don't want unreliable employees. This is a dollar store. Who do they think's going to work here? <laughs> <laughs> Is that what I should tell them? What they don't want is someone making nine twenty an hour, and you know that's what this is. I'll talk to my brother. Maybe he can get you something to do what? <coughs> I'll call him this afternoon. That is just your way of getting me out the door. I'll call Jimmy. I swear to God. He's not gonna have me in there, Stevie. Besides, I've been injured. Lad. It's all line work. I can't work a line. I'm too old for that. I can't keep up. I'm trying to help you. If you want to help me? Let me go back to my register. It's not my choice. Okay, welcome back. I hope you found your discussion lively and enlightening. What tactics did you notice Margaret using? Uh, here's my list. I thought Margaret's overall goal was to avoid getting fired, to hold on to her job, and Stevie's was to fire her. Now, here's my list of the tactics that I noticed Margaret using. They included empathize, apologize, minimize, explain or excuse, shift blame as when she brought up Karen, the co-worker, change the subject, like when she mentioned Karen calling Stevie gay, um, walk away, reason, promise, bargain, challenge. There are probably even more, and you may well have come up with some that I missed. Notice, too, how the tactics implied in the text served as cues and clues to our two terrific actors as they performed the scene. Theater is finally about the, uh, the actors' performances, and I'm sure you noticed how the emotional flavor, the psychological color in Fran McDormand's portrayal of Margaret shifted as she embodied the shifting tactics in the scene. Tactics give variety and color to dramatic writing. So now let's explore the idea of tactics through a simple on-your-feet improvisation that has a bit more complexity, a bit more content than a simple yes or no. So, choose an everyday family situation in which one character wants something from another. Um, maybe it's between a parent and a teenage child who wants more time on the family computer or wants to stay out later or wants to use the family car or stay over at a friend's on a school night. Or maybe it's between two spouses, one of whom wants to take the long postponed family vacation. Uh, it'll be more fun if you don't use your real life relationships, have the adults play the kids and vice versa. And remember, the focus is on tactics. What are all the different ways that the A character uses to achieve the desired goal or objective? Cajole, beg, scold, whatever, anything goes. So pause the video, improvise a couple of versions of the scene and have fun and then come on back and we'll continue. I hope that was enjoyable. Now I want to get a bit more serious by introducing the idea of high stakes. A recurring theme in this series is that theater is life made urgent. In writing plays, we need to think boldly, 
Vivid, contrasting characters, compelling openings, charged circumstances, strong conflicts. Again, what's at stake for Margaret, finally, is the health and safety of her high-needs daughter. Her whole life with her daughter is in jeopardy. The stakes could not be higher nor more pressing. She needs something urgently, and she needs it now. Time pressure is often a key factor in raising dramatic stakes. So, in that spirit, here's your next scene writing challenge. Write a scene for two family members in which the characters use shifting tactics to accomplish their goals with high stakes. Maybe it's between two spouses, one of whom has just received a job offer that needs to be accepted immediately, but means relocating the family. Or maybe it's between a teenage child who's just been accepted at art school and the parent who wants the child to stay home to help support the family. Or maybe it's between two adult estranged siblings, one of whom needs money to avoid eviction or pay off a gambling debt. Create pro profiles for your characters using the forms in the PDFs that accompany this video. Try to make the characters strong and contrasting. Describe the setting and how you can and figure out how you can enlist it to enrich your drama. For example, maybe the desperately needy sibling shows up at a stuffy family party. You could start by improvising the scene before you actually begin writing. And as always, we are eager to see what you come up with. So save your scenes to your family drama folder and post it to your Instagram, tagging us at mtc underscore nyc, or email it to us at ed at mtc-nyc.org. See you next time.